Hey guys, Epicenter Brian here. Hey, I want to show you a little art project that I've been working on for a while. Um, this is pretty cool. And if you're into records, or at least if you remember records, you might really get a kick out of this. So this is a 16-inch transcription uh, record from the late 40s, early 50s. And I have this set up on a mechanism to be able to rotate this and illuminate it from the back with some LEDs. Now I also have um, a, an actual 16 inch gray research uh, 306 tone arm uh, hanging out there to make it look like the record is being played. Now this one, I don't actually have a cartridge in here, but it is a functional tone arm. Um, and I don't have the counterweight up here uh, because I wanted to twist and flop over. But also, I made a little uh, part on my 3D printer here to be able to set the angle so that it looked like it was playing the record. And you have to admit, that is pretty gorgeous. Now, a couple of things about this. This was my first attempt at a rotating version. I've made a couple of stationary ones that are pretty cool too. Um, this motor uh, is a gear motor. It turns at 14, 14 RPM. I got this off of eBay. It was super, super cheap, like $2.50 delivered. Um, but it's very noisy, so I'm not happy about that. And also the shaft, uh, the shaft wants to wobble around. So if there's if there's any inconsistency with the record, it really is obvious and it flops around a lot. So I'm going to do a new version with a better quality gearbox. Hopefully it's going to be quieter. Um, but this is pretty impressive for now, and I'm pretty happy with it. We're going to talk about some of these parts. I made a bunch of parts, and these are uh, some of the parts that I designed and then printed on my 3D printer. The uh, reflector and the mounting uh, part actually came from one of these. Now this is a master lacquer. Some people call these acetates. Uh, that's actually an incorrect term. Uh, it's actually a master lacquer. So these would be normally blank. You would put this on a record cutting lathe and then you would cut the grooves and as you, the grooves are being cut you would put the audio in the grooves. Okay, And this is uh, obviously a used one. And uh, I was doing another project where I was trying to salvage the center of this because the center of a master lacquer is aluminum. And so, uh, anyway, that's for another project that's coming up where I'm going to try to uh, salvage the aluminum cores and then uh, put a new coating on them so I can reuse them and cut new music. Okay, anyway, I discovered that if you take these and you soak them for about a day and a half, you can actually take the uh, lacquer off and you're left with the aluminum core. And so that's what I used in this project. And uh, anyway, I'm going to show you how all the parts go on here and uh, what the parts are. Let's look at the motor. So this is the, the little DC motor, uh, gear motor. And you see it's got a shaft here, and it's got two mounting holes. Now this needs to be positioned right in here on this aluminum backing so that this shaft comes out through this hole right here. I know this is a little hard to see. Um, and then you also see that there are three other holes right here. So um, next up, I made this part, and this is really more of an alignment jig you'll see that there are three holes or three pins here, here, and here. And then there's one here in the center as well. The one in the center goes in the center of the record or the, I'm sorry, the aluminum core. And then these two other holes here, uh, that's where I'm going to uh, drill holes through the aluminum to mount the motor from the back. So I'm going to turn off the camera and install this because I don't think I can do this one-handed. So that's installed now and you can see there we go. Now there are two holes and that's where the motor is going to mount. So I just drill these two holes out and then once that's done this center hole has to be a little bit larger uh, because this uh, ridge on this motor is a little bit larger diameter as well. Okay, and then the next set of parts can go on there. So let me show you some of the other parts. 
Uh, this is a part that I made to support the record um, from the outside, and you see it goes on the shaft here. Now this has a little D uh, indentation um, because this shaft has a flat spot right here, so this was actually made to fit that shaft. Um, it takes a little bit of turning and messing around to press it into the right place. But that's what that part is. Okay, and then this part is the part that the LEDs mount on. And you can see that it would mount here on the inside where those two holes would be for the little motor. And then the LEDs would be wrapped around here and there's a little gap right there to get the wires into the center. So this is uh, LED strip lighting and you see that that would just attach. And um, the way I did this was um, you see that these can be cut every three LEDs, so there's there are fixed uh, lengths that are possible. So what I did was I came up with a circumference all the way around here uh, that would be such that the LEDs would be hidden by the label from the record um, and that the uh, LEDs would provide a little bit of a gap right here so that I could solder the wires and get them through the hole. Okay, I don't know if you could see that, but anyway, so there were only a couple of combinations that would still fit and, um, you know, hide the LEDs underneath the record label and this diameter happened to work. Okay, now there are some other parts. This is a piece that goes in the back and it allows the motor to be spaced um, so that the motor, in case it gets hot, doesn't touch the wall. And then you see there's a little notch right here. That allows you to, to uh, put this on a screw or um, you know a nail on the wall and hang the whole unit. So it'll be obvious where those go in the back when I show you in just a minute. And uh, anyway, let's see. I mentioned that I'm going to use a different motor. It has a different shaft diameter and I found a better solution for this this part that I made on the printer. Um, this will work very well and attach to the slightly larger shaft on the new motor. I got that from these guys. I don't know how to pronounce their name but you can find them on the web. And that is just a hub adapter for a six millimeter shaft. All right, let's take a look at how all those parts mount. Here's what the inside looks like and a couple of those parts. Okay, so you'll notice here and here are the two holes that uh, mount this motor. So the motor actually goes this way. Okay, and you can also see that uh, this part here has the LEDs installed. Let's see if we can get in a little better. Okay, there you go. Um, and what I did was I, I left a gap here intentionally to get those wires through. Um, and what I did was I soldered um, a wire from here to here and here to here. Now those wires were not necessary to make the circuit work. They're there to keep the ends of the LEDs from coming loose, you know, uh, once this starts getting warm in case the glue softens a little bit. I didn't want this to kind of peel. So that holds it all together. And then you see that the power wires go through a grommet. Now that uh, hole was actually already there. And you notice there are two uh, bolts going through here. And those are going through existing holes as well. And they go into this part in the back. Okay. Uh, all right, and now let's take a look at the back side on this. I'll just flip it over. There you see the motor. There you see that, that uh, part here that allows uh, hanging it off of a screw or something. And then I went ahead and I added a stabilizer here, here, and here. And I just did that with hot glue. What I found was this wanted to kind of wiggle around a little bit and so it worked out best to have spacers added um, so that this didn't wobble. You know, even though it was being supported right here, originally I had one post here and it, and it wobbled around. So once I supported it, uh, it looked much, much better. 
Now you'll also notice that this aluminum has a pattern to it and this one doesn't. Okay. Um, I experimented with uh, stock, highly reflective. I also experimented with um, sanding this with a DA so it had a very flat finish and also with this brushed aluminum look and actually I liked the reflection pattern a lot better with this. So what I did was I took the blank, put this on my record cutting lathe and then I spun it and just sanded that with some 220 grit sandpaper to get that pattern. And I like that because it looks a little bit different as you move around. Then the record just goes on here and what I've got is I've just got a screw that goes into the motor shaft and then there's a rubber grommet and there's a washer and it goes right down in there three millimeter screw and uh, there you have it just get screwed into place and project done. So what's next for this project? Well uh, besides changing the motor I'm considering changing the lighting back behind here so all of these LEDs are white light LEDs and of course uh, because the disc is red only the red component of that light is coming through. Now I'm considering changing this to RGB LEDs uh, ones that are they're called Neo Pixels each one would be individually addressable all the way around. There'd be a little Arduino processor mounted in here. And then the idea is, okay, imagine that this area is brighter, this area is dimmer, and so it's bright, dimmer, 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 dimmest, brighter, brighter, brightest. That whole pattern could be moved by one LED at a time, okay? And that whole pattern could move as well, so that it's, it's less static looking. Now, the other cool thing is, if these LEDs, as an example, were blue, um, the blue light would come out from the side, but it wouldn't come out here. Only red light is going to pass through the disc. So, if you had some area that wouldn't pass through, like blue, and then you move the pattern, this would look like a second hand that could travel around here and depending on the rate of uh, rotation of the data from LED to LED, then this could look like a second hand. But what's also cool is it could take 30 seconds to go around or it could take 15 seconds. So this could end up being like an ex-DJ's dream 15 second commercial timer which would be very cool as well so that's what I'm thinking about doing and you know maybe this winter but I have other projects to work on but for now there it is for the epicenter.com I'm epicenter Brian signing out